Hi, welcome back all of you. Nana here and we are into the next topic on the fusion inventory implementation. Today we are going to see item import. Item import is a very tough topic and then you have to follow it up and then try to do this practice on Saturday and Sunday and then report to me on Monday that it is done now. Right? So if you are completed, you can even report on the WhatsApp group that you are completed. Right? So try this now fine. So watch it keenly and then ask questions now fine. Please watch keenly, keenly and then ask questions. I will not go on and share my screen now. I'm sharing my screen. Watch it keenly and then do it now. Go, on. <clears throat> go there. Go on. So now I'm now logging in now. Fine. Let me log in. I'm now logging in with the SCM19 actually. Fine. Go there. Click on sign in. So the first activity we have to do is what? We have to do the application desktop framework integration actually. So go there. So once I logged in, you click on the left hand side navigator. On the left hand side top, you have a three three lines now. Fine. Click on the navigator. There is called the navigator button. I click on it and then go down. And then here, what happens? You go there, go to the tools. Now. Go to the tools. So go there. Go to the tools. Now. Go to the tools. And then here at the bottom, we'll be having a download ADF desktop integrated. Fine. You click on it. So click on it. Download. In the tools, you'll be having it. Not on the in this tool. On the springboard tools, it will not be visible. On the springboard tools, it will not be visible. On the tools, on the left-hand side, navigator will be visible. So click on the download ADF desktop integrator. We are not downloading it now. So the downloading is happening. Can now see on the right hand side top the download is happening now. If you click on the arrow, fine. Can now see it's now getting down. It is not done. Now I am going to install it. So go there. I will now go there. Show the full download history. Go there. It will now available. So I will not double click and then install it. So ADF DA. It is called Application Desktop Framework Desktop Integrator actually. ADF is Application Desktop Framework Desktop Integrator. I will now click on it and then I will now install it. I am going to install it. So go there. Now the the installation will not update a previous one. So in your case, what happens? It will not be there at all. There won't be there will not be any ADF desktop integration. So in my case, it is updating it. Whereas in this case, this message will not come. So click on next. So follow the on-screen instructions and do it. If I click on next. I'm installing it. If I click on install. I'm installing it. So the installation of ADF desktop integration is now complete. So click on close to exit. Now what I'm going to do is fine. I will not close it. So ADF DA is now installed. If I click on it. If you are not having it, what you do is if uh, that is not available on this area now, if this place, what happens in the tools, some of the instances will not give you the download ADF desktop integrator. In that case, what you do is you go there. I have a ready made one available. It is the old one actually. If you go there, I have an old one. You go to the, what happens? You go there. See, you, I will not go to the, what you are, this thing now. Ah, uh, where is it? Yeah. Hmm, man. Expand it. So the book one, see you a CM drive. I will now open it up. So here I will now open up the fourth one now. Fine. Go to the four. additional docs records four. I go there. In this place, the 64th file. Fine. The 64th file is basically what is a new version. It is a new version not done. In 22 is a new version. In 19, in the 2022 is a new version. Now it is all changing. So you install it. While installing it, it will now automatically upgrade to the latest one. Actually. So if that is not available, you can use the 64th file, double click on and install it for the ADF DA integration. Got it now? Fine. This is what this is the way you are doing. So now this is installed. Now what you do? Go there. I will now open up the Excel sheet. And click on the Excel sheet first of all. You open up the Excel sheet now. I am now opening it up. Fine. Click on open it up. And then here, what happens? In the left hand side bottom, you have options. In the left hand side bottom, you have options now. Fine. Click on the options. So click on the options. And then here, you go to what? Trust center. So options go to the trust center. And then click on the trust center settings. So click on the trust center settings on the right. I will give you an answer. In the left hand side trust center, and then the right hand side trust center settings. So here, what happens? You go to the external content. There, what happens? You have to enable the first one, second one enable, third one enable. Here also enable, and then what happens? Always block must be removed. You should not block at all. So three enables or four enables, and then no block on the external content. Fine. And then you go to the macro settings. After having done the external settings, give a, give a okay now. Right? If you're changing anything, give a okay. I have not changed anything because I've already set it actually. If you make a change, give a okay. So otherwise, otherwise, otherwise you go to the macro settings. In the macro settings, what happens? It must be enable VBA, enable Excel 4, and then trust. So these are the three settings which are do. So macro settings, these three must be on. And then on the external content, these four must be on. And you should not have a tick mark on this. Right? Whenever you make a change, you have to give a okay now. Right? So for me, everything is done. So I'm not doing anything. I'm now simply canceling it. So these are all the settings on the Excel actually. Done. Now go there. Now what you're going to do is we are going to find, we are going to import the item. So let's say we have 5,000 items to be imported in the system. So we are going to import it now. Right? So how I'm importing it? Just watch. Right? Just watch. 
I'm not going to import it now. So go there, click on it. I will not go to the docs.oracle.com. So docs.oracle.com, I go there. I go to docs.oracle.com, I go there. So I will not go to the cloud applications. Before I go there, what happens? I go there, I will not see what is the version of mine. Right? So I will not see the version of mine. Click on the name on the right hand side top. And then you go to the about or about this application. Click on the name on this one. The bottom, there is a about this application. If I click on the about this application, it will say 24C. So we are now, the current version of this is 24C, which we are working upon on the dev 38 now. Fine. So, that's okay. so, go ahead. so now what happens? I will not go there. I will not. The cloud applications, I will not go to the supply chain and manufacturing. On the right hand side, we are out of here. I will not click on the supply chain and manufacturing. I will not click on the supply chain now. So here, you choose the version of it now. B or C, whatever it is. And now we are in C, and so choose it 24 C only. And then click on the all books on the left hand side. So click on the all books on the left hand side. And then here, what happens? You go there, and then go down. Get it sorted. No, go down, go down, go down. User, go down, go down. And then the implementation. And go there. In the implementation, what happens? You'll be having a file based data import called FBD. File based data import is the one. So this we are going to what happens? Do it now. Fine, click on. So click on the file based data import. There's a HTML link. Fine, click on this. Under the implementation, you'll be having it now. Fine. Click on the HTML, uh, what the link now. Fine, click on. No, no, no. So here, what happens? You go there. You're having an overview, inventory management. So many things are coming. Maintenance is coming. And manufacturing is coming. And then order management is coming. Order management. And then the PLM is coming. Under the product life cycle management, you'll be having item, fine, item import. Fine. There are so many things which you can import now. Fine, click on. I'm not going to go item import. Under the PLM, I will not click on the what happens, item now. So there are 13 sheets are there, out of which for a basic license of inventory, only the first three sheets are used. The remaining are not used by the basic license. They are all used by innovation, ideas, and then uh, PLM itself, fine. There are so many other modules that they will be using now. Fine. Whereas our module, inventory module, will not use only the first three sheets. I am going to correct it now. Thank God. So I will now click on the hyperlink on the template. Now, this is the template. I click on the hyperlink on the template. The template will be getting downloaded. Got downloaded. I'll go there. I will not take a, I will not go to the folder and no, click on the folder. And then I will not take a copy of the template. Item import template. I'm taking copy. So now I will not come back to ours. No, fine, click on it. <clears throat> I will not go there. So I will not go to the CSM training. I will not create a directory. No, fine, click on it. <clears throat> click on new. No, fine. I will not say folder. I will not say item import. So I'm not creating a folder called item import. No, open up. Fine. Double click on the open up. And then I will not paste this. Though. So this is not pasted. So under the CM training, I have item import and then what happens? Item import template is coming. Now let us now do this now. So before I do it, what happens? I will now open up my generic one. Now I click on it, close now. So it is not downloaded actually. Now what happens? I will now go there. I will now open up my what happens? You go there, click on it. I will now open up just now. Fine. I will open up the fourth record, additional docs records four. I am opening it up. Fine. Here we have a vision enterprise structure on the 03. 03 is a vision enterprise structure. Fine. Double click on it and then open it up. You are opening up vision enterprise structure. So we must know the entities on which you are working upon. So we are working on the visions instance, and then ledger is this one, the COA is this, the legal is this, the business unit is this, the master org is this, and then the child org is going to be 001. So I'm going to import an item into my master org, and then later on I will not assign it to my child org. That's what I'm doing. So you may even, at one time, you can even import around 5,000 items actually. Now I'm doing it only for two items actually, and then we can do it for 5,000 items or 10,000 items also. We are going to do it now. Right? Don't go there. <laughs> go there. So I'll now close this screen now, I click on it. I will not go there. So now I will not come to this now. See your CM training. <clears throat> I will not open up my see your CM training. I will not open up the item import directory. I will not double click on it. I'm going to open up this template. Right? Click on it. Before which what happens, you right click and then go to the properties. Before you open it up, go to the right click and then go to the properties. You go to the properties. And then here you have to unblock it. So it is already blocked. If I try to double click on it, or you will see a yellow color icon will be coming on this top. So here you can see a yellow color, this thing is coming. So if it is coming, then you cannot do anything at all. It is in a protected mode, actually. <coughs> it's a protected view. So close it, and then we will now remove this yellow color icon. Fine, close it. No, fine, go there. So first of all, you close it. I will now remove the yellow color icon. Fine, right click and then go to the properties. Right click and then go to the properties. And then unblock. And then click on apply. Click on apply. And then click on OK. It is now unblocked. Now we can very well open up. When you open up, no yellow color strip will be coming on the top. No, fine, double click on it. No yellow color strip will be coming on the top. <clears throat> it is now editable now. It is not totally editable actually. So the first three tab regions only you have to concentrate. No, fine. The remaining tab regions are not for us. Fine. So I will not go to the first tab region. I will not go to the first tab region. Oh, right. So click on it. You got it now. Fine. So here, what happens? They, now, they already created so many items. No, fine. Go there. So go there. Click on it. The description is okay. Fine. Go there. I will not go back. The, the first column actually. Fine. Go there. So transaction type is only create actually. So we can even create or update or sync actually. Fine. 
we normally do the creation of equation. I, go there. I will not make a batch ID if I go there. It's a 2001. And then the batch number is also 2001. So always keep the batch ID and batch number same actually. Item number. So I go there. So I'm working on T10. T10, I will say import point one. So I'm not doing an import one now. Fine. The item name is a T10 underscore import one. Outside processing, remove the flag. And then organization code is what? 000. So here, what happens if you see? Our organization master org is 000. Fine. There is a code now. Fine. Go there. I will not put the code 000 and then give a tab. So once when I give a tab, only one zero is coming. So make it as a character now. With the apostrophe, you put apostrophe and then triple zeros. Fine. It will be saving us. Apostrophe and triple zero. It will not take it as a character and then do it. So description, what happens? I go there. I will not take a copy of it and then put down this now. Fine. I will not say T10. Fine. I will say description. Fine. Just something with it. Fine. Description underscore. So this is a description item actually. So PAMDH is okay. Fine. Go there. That is okay. Fine. Go up. Go for the the root item class is okay. Now we are going to create everything on the root item class is okay. Fine. The primary unit sum is each actually. Fine. So what I will do is I will not make it as EA. Fine. EA I am going to make it now. Fine. Go there. I will not make it as EA. Fine. EA and then delete the remaining characters. So we normally use only EA here. And then current face code is what? Nothing. Go there. Click on it. And then it is now. This is active. If it is active, then what happens is so many attributes are automatically made to, made to on now. So go there. Click on it. Now what happens is allow maintenance assets. No is okay. <clears throat> Enable genealogy. I will not delete it now. Fine. I don't want it now. Fine. This also I don't want it. Delete it. <clears throat> later on, you can experiment it later on. Then you know it now. Fine. So I'm not deleting those things now. I click on this. Huh? And then go there. Costing enabled. I will not say what happens. Yes, no. Fine. You will not make the costing is enabled as yes, no. Fine. Yes. And then here, what happens? Inventory asset value is also yes. That means what? It is an asset item actually. So once when costing enabled is done, and then inventory asset value is yes, then what happens is an inventory asset item actually. Go further, go further, go further, go further, <clears throat> go further. And these things need not have to be done. Now, click on it. I'm not creating the item actually. Go there. So here, what happens? Nothing is there actually. Go, 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 go. There are so many attributes which you can very well do it now in this case. So nothing is really required actually. And then you can even populate so many things in the field as and when it needs. Now, when whenever you need it, whatever you can do it. Now. So normal item creation, we won't populate those things. Now, click on it. And then item type is what. I will not remove the no, fine. I will not say FG is okay. Fine. FG is okay. Fine. FG item type is okay. <clears throat> FG item type is okay. Fine. Item type is FG is okay. <clears throat> Otherwise, what happens? I will not remove the FG also because the active will not automatically populate the FG. The status of active will not populate the item type also automatically. So remove it. When you are given active, so many things are getting auto populated actually. There. <clears throat> Where I came on it. So coming, coming, coming. Go further, no, fine. nothing else is required. Oh, God, it's a very huge one. So many attributes are there in the item, actually. Item will be having more than 200 attributes, actually. So, those that many attributes, the 200 plus attributes. So, you can even populate anything now. Fine, CS is enabled, like remove it now. Uh, I'm unwanted ones, I'm now removing it, actually. Go further, go further, <sighs> go further. So many things are coming out. So many additional attributes are there. And all done. So now I will not give a control home. I will be coming to the main one. So first line is not populated. The second line onwards, I will not delete everything. I will not select it and then delete it now. Right? Deleting it. And then at every point in time, you keep on saving it. Central is commit. I'm not saving it actually. Now what happens? I'm going to copy the first line and then put it in the second line. When take copy it and then so put it in the second line. Paste it second line. So here, what happens? The batch number, everything is same actually. The item is going to be second. So it's second item. Likewise, we may even what happens? Create uh, five, uh, thousands of items actually. The description also I'm not making it. Really. So even you can even cut and paste from an Excel sheet actually from the customer's customer file. So only two changes are there. Fine, click on comment. That's it. So the first sheet is ready actually. The first sheet is ready. And then what happens? You go there. I have now removed almost everything now. Fine. All other fields are removed. Fine. You can even populate data on all those fields and then try it now. So we are now creating everything on the master of now. On the master of now. So go there. I will now go to the second now. Fine. The second sheet, what happens? If you have any revisions to be made, then the revisions will be coming. Now there is no revision law. So do it. If there is anything, you please delete it now. I will now go to the item categories. Fine. Click on item categories. There are so many categories. They are making it additionally. I don't want any categories. Fine. Select it and then delete it now. Continue. So delete it. Fine. Come, let's come in. That's it. So my template is ready. 
So the template is ready. Now what I'm going to do is I will know what I was the creator CSV parent. After the third tab region, you go to the item relationship, there'll be something and then associations, there are so many, don't worry about it. They are not for it. They are all for PLM uh, activity. Now. When you're working on PLM, what happens, you have to populate it. So don't worry about it. The first three sheets only has to be very proper. Fine. First sheet is okay. Second sheet is blank. The third sheet we made is blank. So come in. Now what happens, you go to the first sheet, instructions and CSV. So after having done it, do not delete any sheets at all. None, none of the sheets must be deleted now. Fine. There are so many sheets are there. So you should not delete any of the sheets actually. Fine. The sheet has to be kept as such now. And the sheets should not be later. Every sheet must be as such. And don't, don't, don't do anything at all on this one. <coughs> Very sensitive one. You go to the first sheet. You go to the first first line. First sheet. So here, instructions and CSP. And go to the And then here, what happens? You'll be having what? One. Generate CSP file is there. And click on the generate CSP. After having done all the issues, you save now. You save it. And then click on instructions. And then click on generate CSP file. You are now going to generate a CSP file. So where exactly are you going to do it? I will now put it on the import file now. I have now created an import file. I'll go there. I will now open up my what? CM, CM, CM training. I will now open up the item import. So I will now name it as what? Import one. So once again, I will now give a cancel. Now. One more setup also. I don't find give a cancel. I'm not I'm not importing it actually. Go there. So close it now. Fine. Click on close. And then don't save now. Fine. Don't save. I will now again open the sheet. I have to make one more setup. I forgot it. I'm not saving it. Fine. So I will not. What happens? I will not go there. The false one. Fine. Uh, EGP system interface and also deleted. So I will have to do one more setup. I know the forgotten it. Right? Double click on it. So when, when you are mass importing it, what happens? We will not try to take up one of the reference fields on this one. So go there. So here uh, there is called starting lot number. Right? Control H. Control H. I will now say find what is what? Starting. S T A R T A N G. Starting. Let's go lot. Right? I will not go on the coin. So find starting lot number, find it on find. So here in this case, what happens? I'm not going to use this field at all. So likewise, whichever field you are not using it, you choose it. Now. I will not put the same batch number, right? 2001. On all the lines, I will not put the same batch number. So once when you're querying it, we will not query on the starting lot number actually. That is what it is. So if lot number is used, you choose something else. Right? Yeah, that is serial number, uh, serial number control, fine. If that is not used, whichever field is not used, you choose one number now. There are 5,000 lines are there. Put all the 5,000 lines with one number. Actually. And then on the next import, it will be 2002. The next import will be 2003. So every batch of import will have a common, what happens, a number, which in the in the inventory item, we are not using it actually. So, go there. so click on home. So 2001, you are given the starting lot number. Fine, give it a number. Now we go there, and then we will now create it. Fine, click on the instructions or CSV. Fine, go there. I will now go there, create the CSV file. They go to get the CSV. So click on the generate CSV file by which what happens that this, this is now coming. Fine, go there. I will not go down. I will not choose my directory now. Fine, click on it. I will not go there. Open it up. And then I will not go to the item import. No. I will not go there. I will not show the import one. Import one of the one. Fine. Click on save. So import one of the one in the item import. I'm saving it now. Fine, click on save. So it will be saving this file. It will be saved actually. So click on it. This file is going to be saved actually. You're not saving it actually. So there are 13 sheets are there. So out of which only the first three sheets is used by item import. The remaining are all used by PLM module. The product lifecycle management module is model. fine. So only first two sheets are CSP file. Zip has been created. Fine. Click on OK. Now fine. Go there. No doubt. Now you close the file without saving it. Now fine. Click on close. And then do not save it all. You know, got closed. I think probably. Uh, probably it must have got auto, auto closed. You know, go there. You know, so click on. It's not auto closed actually. It's not auto closed. Fine. Go there. Otherwise, what I mean, you have to close without save actually. So the import one zip file, the first three sheets has got data. Now, we will now bring it into the UCM area. UCM area is what? Universal content management. So, we have to bring this to the UCM area. Click on it. We will not go to the system. Now, click on it. We will not go to the system. I will not go to this place. I will not close this. No, I will not go there. I will not bring it to the UCM area, actually. So, I go there. I will not go to what? Tools. I will not go to the tools. And then here, what happens? You will be having a file import export. So, you will be having what? One file import export. <clears throat> Uh, it is not visible here. Fine. File import export is not visible in the tools. Fine. So otherwise, what about the left-hand side navigator? Go on this because you had to add it and do it. Fine. So in the left-hand side navigator, everything will be visible. Fine. So go there. I'm not going to perform a file import export. No. It's not visible here. Fine. Not visible. So go to the navigator, the left-hand side, and then go to the tools. No. Fine. And then here, we'll not perform a file import export. This is the one. So it is not visible as icon, actually. Fine. Click on the file import export. So click on the file import export. We are going to import this file into the UCM area. Fine. Click on trust. 
no click on plus and nobody import into the use area use area is what universal content management I choose the file i will not choose the file but i click on it i will not go to the place file. i will not go to the item import this is the file i'm choosing it now i click on it i'm not i'm choosing the file now account is what scm item import you have to park the item at the appropriate place now there are so many things are there so on this one scm item import you have to park yes keep on sss if you keep on sss it will be scm item import will be coming Yes, yes, yes. The same item import will be coming. Go that. So, SCM CST is coming. D idea installation interface interface. Go that. SCM item import has to come. Is on. Right. You choose the appropriate area. So, we have to park the item in the appropriate slot on the UCM area. UCM is what universal content management. So, park the file on the appropriate UCM account. I click on save and close. Now it is not getting saved actually. SCM item import there is a parking slot in which one of we have parked it. Now we are going to bring it into the interface tables now. So go there. So it, it has been parked on the UCM area. So from the UCM area, we will now bring it to the interface tables of item now. So we'll click on the home now. <coughs> now we are going to do it now. I will not what I'm going to go there. I will not go to the tools. We will not bring it to the interface tables. So go to the tools and then go to the scheduled process. It's a very tough one. Please watch very keenly now. I click on the schedule process. So from the UCM area, we will not bring it to the interface table. Now, thank you all. Schedule process, thank you. So schedule new process, go there. So on the schedule process, what happens? I will not say load int, load space int, and then give a tag. I will not load import, load interface file for import. Now, thank you all. We are going to run this ESS job. So go there. So import process is what item import. Now, fine. Drop it down, and then you may not be able to exactly select it by navigating down. Now. So make a search on this. Now, if the import process, fine. Click on the uh, down arrow. So it will not show you a lot of things. Thank you. It has to choose item import. So if this is not exactly visible, then what happens? You click on the search and then query for it. So it's what item import. So here the query is case sensitive. Both are capitals actually. If you make a search, it will not come at all. So if both eyes are capital, actually, Baker search actually. I don't know why they made no. item import. Both eyes are capital, then it will come. I click on it. I will not choose the area where we have to bring it in now. Fine. The product model fine. So the UCM area is a slot actually. Fine. Click on OK. So I click on it. So the import process, if you choose it, then automatically my data file will be coming. You can see the data file is coming. So if you choose some other import process, then my data file is not parked there. Fine. This is not the UCM area. So this is the UCM area. It is already parked. Fine. Choose the file and then click on submit. By which what happens? It will be brought into the interface tables of item item import. Thank you. So from the UCM area, the item is now coming into the interface area. Fine. Click on submit. It will be coming into the interface tables of item import. Fine. Click on it. And then plenty of concurrence will be running. And then when you're doing it, fine, click on search, and I will now query on my number. No, fine. This is SCM19. SCM19 is the one submitted by SCM19. Only my concurrence will be visible. No. So go there. So click on it. No, click on it. No. What about the transfer is came in. <laughs> Load interface file for is running now. Fine. So the 13 sheets are there. Everything will now run. 13 sheets will be running. We had to wait for everything to complete. Now fine, click on it. We'll have to wait for everything to complete. So once when everything is completed, what happens? It has all been brought into the interface tables now. Right. Has been all been brought to the interface tables. Now, what happens? You go there. You now wait for the main con the load interface has to get completed. No, right? The 144th concurrent has to get completed. Right? Click on refresh now for refresh, refresh, and then wait for it to complete now. 114 has to get completed. Now, 114 has got succeeded. No? Right. Purge is okay. Fine. This is done by some other thing. Fine. It's okay. Purge is okay. Fine. Click on it. So, purging is now waiting for it. No, fine. Doesn't matter. <clears throat> Apart from that, every other thing has gone. No? Okay. So, my load interface file has now succeeded. Now it has come into the interface tables of item import. Now we will not bring it to the base tables. Thank you. We are not going to bring it to the base tables. So click on the schedule new concurrent new process. I will now order put item import. So item import will now bring in from the interface tables of item import to the base tables of item import. I give it up. So item import then give it up. This can be I have given a small i only, it doesn't matter. This is okay. Whereas in the UCM area, when you are load interface there, it must be very properly coded. No, Both eyes must be capital. I click on it. So this is the one. This is now going to bring it from the interface tables of item import into the base tables of item import. Fine, click on OK now. Now going to bring it. So go there. Batch ID is 2001. So 2001. Nothing else to be given. So only 2000 ID is the only one. The remaining don't give anything at all. So it will automatically bring the batch into the base tables. Fine, click on the batch. So now an item import process will be triggered. It will now run 7 or 8 concurrents automatically. 7 to 8 concurrents or something more also. So they will be running it. So the final process is what? Import child is the process which will be running. So item import is running off. Fine. So some summon eight concurrence. The so finally item import child has to run. And that means what? It has now got imported actually. So first populate the CSV file under the UCM area, then bring the file from the UCM area into the interface area, and then finally bring it to the base area. 
This is a three process step, three step by step process you are doing now. Atom import is running now, fine click on it. No, fine. And the midtime, what happens? Hello, go right click and then duplicate now. We are going to query it now, fine click on it. We are going to query in this place. <clears throat> we are going to query this item, fine click on it. I will now go to what? Product management. I will now go to the product management. I will now go to the product management. I go to the product information management. I go to the product information management. And then I'm going to query this item actually. I'm going to query this item. We are going to query this item. So click on it. And then go there. If I click on it, I will now go to the what? Browse items and then query for it. So while querying it, what happens? We are given a starting lot number. So we will now add one field now. Fine. We are going to add a field now. If I click on it. We will now add a field on this query now. So is the starting lot number I'm going to add now. Fine. Click on the add fields. In the query, this much I will know what happens to move this side, fine. This one it will make, make it big actually. So click on add fields. This is a starting lot number of the field I have known. I have given it to the 2000 now. Fine. So find is what? Now say S T A or T A N G and then capital N. Starting lot number is coming. So choose it and then bring it to the right hand side. Starting lot number, I'm bringing it to the right hand side. So go there. So is the starting lot number and click on OK. So now what happens if I know this batch has got 5,000 items, I will be what happens to querying on 2001, all the 5,000 items which have been done with the starting lot number of 2001 will be coming in one go actually. So that is the way we can very well do it. And then we can even modify any attribute on this 2001 batch, next 2002 batch. So there are 10, 10 people are there, let us say we are given 50,000 items. <laughs> Employee 1, Rama is now given 2001, <laughs> Krishna is now given 2002, and then Govinda is now given 2003. So all the employees will be what happens uh, populating it and then they can query their uh, lot number and then they can query their items and then they do any modification. So you go to the monitor process and then we'll now see, and we'll now see the child import process has now got succeeded. So here what happens, import item child has now succeeded. And go ahead. So now some more things are waiting actually, it doesn't matter. Point. Once when the import child is completed, we can know what happens, everything is now completed actually. Import child is the one which is coming. And then go down and then see on the import item. So item import has succeeded actually. Once when the import child, and I find import child, find import child is completed, then what happens? It will be making the item import succeeded. Now we can very well query now. Fine, click on it. Now we have got only two items on this. Now, fine, 2001. We have only got two items. Now, fine, click on search. Now, fine, we'll be having only two items on this. Fine, click on search. We'll be showing those two items. Fine, those two items are coming to the base table section. Fine. So with these descriptions. Now I have to assign this to the org. We go there. So all the items are created in the master org, and then we have to assign it. So all the 5,000 items can be assigned in one go, actually. In one go, we can very well assign. We go that point. I will not do it. I will, in the left hand side, what happens? There is a box now. You, let us say there are 5,000 items are there. If you click on this box, then all the 5,000 items will be selected in one go now. Fine. Click on it. There are only two items, you know, collecting it. But if there are 5,000 items are there, all of them will be selected in one go by clicking on this box now. Next, next item, what happens? There is a box. If you click on it, everything will be selected. Now, I will not go on then, do the assignment now. Fine. Go to the actions. And then what happens? You go to the manage item mass changes. Manage item mass changes, fine. Click on it. And then in the top, we have assigned to organization. Manage item mass changes in the top. We have assigned to organization. Fine, click on it. And then I will now put my 001 org. Assigned to mass changes. Fine, click on it. So click on it. In the top, what happens? You wait plus now. Fine, click on plus. And then put the organization code is what? 001. And then make a search. Now, fine, click on search. And then I'm searching it. Fine. Choose it. Left hand side, choose it. And then click on apply. And then click on that. So by which, what happens? I am now going to perform an assignment actually to this organization. So now, what happens? Once when I give a OK, again, what happens? An item import will be triggered now. It will again trigger an item import and then it will be done. Fine. So click on OK and then an item import will be triggered actually. So go there. This is a screen which is now going to trigger an item import. Do not modify anything on the screen now. Fine. Click on submit. So click on submit. What happens? An item import will be triggered now. Your process, what happens? Submit and Fine. Click on again. So initially we made one import and then another import is coming. Fine. Go there. I will now make a search. Fine. Click on search. <laughs> it will be showing you everything. The second import import is now running. So once when this completes with the import item child, then what happens? All the items, 5,000 items will be assigned to the child org actually. In our case, it's only two. In reality, it will be very more. Everything will be assigned in one go to the child org. Item import is now running. It's now going to assign everything to the item. Fine, click on Item import child is running now. Right? So once when the item import child gets completed, what happens? Uh, uh, your batch is now getting completed actually. The batch is now getting completed. In the meantime, what happens? You go there. I will now right click and then duplicate. Right click and then duplicate. <laughs> 
and I go to the product information management. If I click on the product information management, and then here what happens? We will be having an infolet here. In the infolet, item import batches are two or batches are two batches are. We'll not go there. We'll not wait for it and then wait for the item import child to complete. Fine. The item import child is also completed, and then you can now see the item import is also succeeded. So in this place on the one on the main infolet, what happens? Import batches. Are, if you click on the two, it will not show you all the imports which has happened. So go there. So you know, if I number is on, you go there, zero, 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 I go there. They click on search, you know, if I click on search again, <clears throat> you click on search, only one is going. I don't know why the second one is not showing. The total item records successfully imported is to find. Initially, what happens, the two records have been imported now. Now, what happens, we have now done the assignment also. It has to show me now, if I click on it. So click on search, you know, find the second record is not coming. Come on here. Refresh total, if I click on the refresh. If there is any, anything, if I they must. Select a row and doing it. If there is any other extra import, what happens? You can even refer the total. But I don't know why it's not coming now. Right? The second import is not coming. You know, see what is the problem on the search now? And search, what happens? Go there. Spoke system is okay. And drop it on. Okay, this is okay. Product information management data system. Go there. The one now. Find. I will now remove the assigned to find. Go there. I will now remove it and then make a search now. Right? Click on search. So click on search now. Find. Click on search. You now see. Oh, it is a must actually. Uh, what happens? Advanced is name starts with. What is this? Uh, please provide a value for at least one of the indicator field now. Man. What is the name? Name is what? I will not say 2001. So, is the one now. If I click on search, now if I click on search. Oh, it is not the name at all. Status is what? Active. Uh, that is not the mandatory field actually. It is a mandatory field. Name or assigned to. Oh, God. I will not say SCM 19 dot student. Well, that's not. And then click on search now. It has to show me the second record also. Ah, come on, it is not coming. It's all caps now. ASCM 19.student. So click on search now. It's still not coming. Oh, God, this is one. So I'll now remove this 2001 and then make a search now. I click on search. You have to have two records now. I click on search. So I've got only one record. I don't know why it's so. Come on here. Yeah. Any, anybody has got any, any hint on it now? I know that. Ah. Okay, it has to show me two records. Okay, the two, second record is now assigned to uh, assignment. Okay, there is also a, if you go to the monitor process, <laughs> everything has got completed actually. <laughs> everything is now completed. So it has to show me on the infolet area now. Okay, it's not showing me. Okay, then. now what I do is I will not go to the main area. This, you know, so I will not requery again now. Now we'll have four lines actually. If you go there, I will not requery now. Click on it. Now go there. Click on requery now. Browse items is there. Click on it. And then there is, I have to expand the search now. Click on it. So click on that. It's not visible at all. Where is the search? Uh, advanced search. I will now expand advanced search and then click on search again. I click on search again. Now there will be four items now. Fine. Two on the master org and then two on the child org. Now what I'm going to do is I want to insert a list price and then modify it. And then before doing it, what happens? You'll now see the list price is controlled at what level? Now? Fine. I will not go there. I will not go to this place. Fine. Click on it. I will now see the list price is controlled at what level? Fine. Click on the setup and maintenance. <laughs> I will now see list price is controlled at what level? Okay. <laughs> Now go to the search, now click on search, and then I will now say, what am I saying? Uh, percentage item, fine, percentage ADT, RIB, attribute, control. Fine. Item attribute control is the one. Everything is fine. Is the item attribute control fine? Click on it. Click on it. And then you will now go to the manage operational attributes. So here, it is on the purchasing, fine, purchasing. And then there's a list price, now fine, click on it. With a list price, list on the entry, now fine, with a list price. So it is now controlled the master level. So that means what? We cannot change the list price, the child or whatever. Now we will not make a mistake. Now, thank you, God. We will not make a mistake. This place, what happens? We will not make a mistake. So, what happens? We will not, first of all, insert the like, fine. We will not, what happens? Go there. We will not insert the list price over here. Now, fine. Go to the view, go to the columns, now, add columns. So, click on add columns. And then here, what happens? I'm going to add a column for list price now. List price. List price is the one, fine. I click on it. I'll not bring it to the item side. So now what happens? No brought it. So let us now put this next to item actually. Fine. Keep it. And then I will now push up, up, and then bring it down. So I will now push up, up. It will be displayed on the what happens after item actually. Okay. List price. Keep it. And then click on push now. Fine. So one by one is coming. I will now go to the top now. Fine. I will now push the top first of all. List price will become the top. I will now pull it down by one now. One level. Fine. So item list price is now coming. Fine. So this is the second field now. Fine. We can use this arrow mark to control the what about the display of this. Fine. Click on it. It is not done. So now what about the second field is the list price. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit the list price of all these things. Now. Fine. So the first two are in the master, the second two are in child. Now. 
And remember, when you give in the master, it will be coming automatically in the child because of the master control. So what happens? I will now go on and select all the 5,000 lines. Now. I will now go to the left-hand side and click on it. All the 5,000 lines. There may be 5,000 lines there. Right? Select it. And then go to actions. And then give manage item mask changes. Right? Click on it. And then I will now say edit item attributes. Right? So click on it. So previously we did the assigned to organization. Now I am now doing edit item attributes now. Manage item mask changes. Click on the edit item attributes. I am going to edit it now. Right? Click on it. So go there. <coughs> So go there, click on it. I'm going to read. So here, what happens? They will be having what long description. The list place is coming at the bottom at the end. I don't know why it's so. I will not give one here. I will not give two here. I will not give three here. I will not give four here. It is not possible at all. So one means what? The master is one. The child also must be one. If it is two, it also has to be two. So we are not making a mistake actually. Right? Click on it. We are not making a mistake. So click on it. And then here, what happens? You go there. I will not click on next now. So this will again trigger what happens? Yeah, what's called yeah, item import actually. So the list price is now getting updated. So we are going to edit the item attributes and then do it now. Fine, click on it. So click on next now. Fine. Now the import screen will be coming. The same screen is coming. Fine. Click on submit by which what happens? The import will be happening. So click on submit. The import is running. So one nine is the import. Fine. You now go there and then have a look at it. So once when it is completed, you can now see there is a change on this. One. And then on the main area, what happens? You go there. No, if I click on the what happens? The save and close. No, you will cancel. I'm not giving any. If you are not made any changes, you will cancel and then come out of it. No, right? click on. So we will now wait for it now. Fine. So here there will be a problem now. Fine. Item import, what happens? It may not, it may give a warning or something like that. Previously, it has got succeeded now. Fine. It may even give a warning now. Fine. We will now see what the I have forgotten the output of it now. Fine. Because in the child, we cannot change at all. A master control attribute cannot be changed on the child org at all. Fine. If it is one and two, it should also be one and two. So we are given three and four. We will now see how it is going to work. Now. Item import is passed now. Import child will happen, but it will be with the errors actually. Click on it. No, go there. Go down and see this one. Item import is happening. If I click on it, it is not passed here. No? It is not passed. Import child is happening now. It's already and then running now. Fine. I do not want to have a success somewhere in the warning or something like that has to come now. Click on it. Let's have a look at the warning now. Thank you. So click on it and complete. Because it's not succeeded only. You don't see item import. You don't see, you don't see the success is there or not. Think about it. Item import is passed. Actually, fine. Item import child. One more child is also running. There are two child is not running now. So once when both the child are completed, then what happens? The item import will now start. So once when the child processes, then the parent will now start. So parent will pass till the child is now running. So it's now succeeded. Now the parent will now start running. <coughs> Click on it. The parent is going to run. Now item import is running. Now we will now see whether it is now getting succeeded or not. I was under the impression that it has to end in the morning actually. Not sure about it. Click on it. Now go there. So it has succeeded actually. Item import has succeeded. Now what we do is we will now go to the search area. Click on it. We will now go to the product information and then we will go to the info. Let's now. In the info, it has to show this error actually. If you click on the home icon and then go there, I will now go to the product management and then go to the product information management. The first area is the infolet area. Fine, go there. there are now six are there. Fine, click on the hyperlink on this one. Fine, click on the hyperlink. Click on the... So now what happens? You now showing you mass changes. Fine, go there. So the remaining what is the only basically now only it is showing now. It was initially assigned. Now fine, the total records is four actually. We are assigning it to the child log. It is not showing you. Fine. Now the next one is a basically an error now. Fine, there is still not showing at all. You know, taking a longer time actually to update the screen now. I click on such now. So this screen is now getting updated a bit later actually. I click on it. Now go there. So click on it. it. If you go on and see the screen, it will now share clearly tell you what are the error on this one. <coughs> Here also. Now only one and two is going. The third import is not yet showing now. Fine. Take some time actually <coughs> to update it. It's not showing you. So two five seven eight one five there. You now go there and see now. Fine. Two seven five. Uh, there is not the item. The item import this is not the one. Ah, uh, what is the number is not showing you the batches? Two five seven eight one five. Two five seven oh. This is not the different number actually. The process ID is different actually. So in this place, what happens? I have to get the third batch. Uh, I'm not getting the third batch, but they're not coming at all. So click on search. The third batch is actually coming. So you'll not see the third batch that has to give error. So if you go to the browse items, and then here what happens? You go there. 
I will not want to go there and then keep a cancel. Nothing. We already done it. Nothing. Click on cancel. And then I will not research again. Nothing. Click on search again. We will not see what is the list price which is not updated. Nothing. Click on click on search. Nothing. Click on search. We will see what is the list price. So one, two, three, four. It is updated actually. It should not do like that at all because the master control item. So we will not try to query the item on the side now. Nothing. Click on the one and then the three. Nothing. Click on the item import. Nothing. Click on the item import one and then see the price list price actually. It is not updated. We will not see on the specifications. No? I am in the child org actually 001. Go to the specifications and then I will not go to the purchasing and then see the list price. List price, what happens? It is now coming as three. It is now grayed out. Fine. You are not supposed to modify it, but while importing it, we can even have a different price, it seems. Whatever price is the master, it will be appear on the side if you are manually assigning it. But during import, it accepts it. Looks so. Previously, it was not accepting it. It will not, it will not throw a clear error actually. Somewhere, some error, I have seen it now. Now they are allowing you. Importing it, whatever we can even have a different price. And there is a master controller item. So the master is one means what child also must be one. So it is allowing you maybe some uh, what happens, Oracle has modified something. Like now what happens is now coming over, you know. Now what I do is I want to export everything to Excel sheet now, fine? Because here modifying it is very difficult, now, fine? There are not much of a spaces there. So export everything into an Excel sheet and then do the changes, now, fine? I will not click on the select, now, fine? Click on select. The left hand side, put it. there are 5,000, all the lines will be selected. Now what happens, you go to actions and then manage item attribute changes, fine, click on it. And then what happens, edit item attributes in the spreadsheet actually. <coughs> Try everything, there are so many things that I will not edit item attributes. So it will be exported into the spreadsheet actually. I remember ADFDA must be installed now, right? ADFDA must have been installed, right? And then that I already shown the beginning is the fine, click on the edit item attributes in the spreadsheet. You're not going to edit it on the spreadsheet actually. Now go there. You will not edit the attributes on the spreadsheet actually. So we'll be exporting it to Excel. And then from there, we will not import it. And the same thing, 1, 2, 3, 4, I will not make it as what? 4, 5, 6, uh, 5, 6, 7, 8. I will not make it in. So the spreadsheet was generated and can be downloaded now. If I click on download. I will not click on download. I am going to download. The spreadsheet was generated. I am not going to give it download. So the mass change template has been done now. If I click on close. Not that, not that. Close. Now that. If you click on the download icon, fine, will not have it now. I will not go to this place. And then again, what happens? The right click and then unlock it now. Fine. Go to the right click and then go to the properties and unlock. Fine. Go to the properties. With it. With it. And then click on unlock. Fine. Click on unlock. Fine. Click on apply. So click on unlock and then click on apply. And then click on OK now. Fine. Click on OK. So it is unlocked now. Fine. That's be unlocked now. Fine. Then only you can open it up. Right click, go to the properties and unlock it. Fine. Double click and then open it up. And double click and open. So now what happens? The item import template will be coming. Fine. Click on it. It has now come actually. So now it is easy for you to work on it. What happens? This thing now. Fine. Click on it. Why this is coming now? Right? How to hide it here? <laughs> this is coming actually. I don't know. I'm gonna make it big now. Oh God! Then also, what happens? This is coming. How to hide it? I'm now showing you the what happens now. I'm gonna delete it. Ah! This is now coming. Now. Right? How to hide it actually? I don't know. The yellow color thing has to be hidden. So now what happens? Updating in this place is very easy actually. Excel sheet is very easy. I will not go there. I will not make it as what? Uh, five and then six and then seven and then eight. Fine. Once when you start entering, it will gone. Likewise, any field can be update, updated now actually. Thank you. So go there and then save now. Thank you. On it. So go there. So now status is okay now. Thank you. On it. So click on commit. Now. Thank you. Let's commit. It is not what happens. Saved actually. The file is now saved with the file is it. Now we will not bring it back into the system now. Thank you. No go there. I will not go there. I will not go to the bring it to the back system. <clears throat> I will not go to the add ins now. If I click on the add ins. Upload data. In the add ins in the top, what happens? I click on the upload data. This will be coming only when the ADFDA is installed. If ADFDA is not installed, I click on the upload data. So I'm not going to upload it. If I click on upload it. So now our access token is now done. Now. So uh, get get token now. I click on get token now. I click on get token. I will be going to the next screen. No, that. So what happens? A token is now generated. Generate and then copy access token. Right? Click on the generate and then copy access token. The access token is now copied. And now come back to the Excel sheet. So in this place, whatever you have to click on get token and then it will be opening a one more sheet there. Whatever you generate and then copy it and then paste this token now. And then click on upload. You have to click on get token. It will now open up one more sheet there. What happens? You go there and then this place, what happens? Click on generate and then copy access token. Do it. And then afterwards, you come back here and then paste it and then click on upload. Now with this token, you are going to upload it. File upload is in progress. <clears throat> It will be uploading it. So the list price is normally 5678 actually. Actually, child org, you should not update it. Wrong. File upload complete. Four rows were uploaded to the batch. 
your process was submitted and click on close. Now you can see again an item import will be running. If you go to the model process, you can now see one more item import will be running. Item import will be running. So whenever you make any changes on the attributes, what happens? Once again, the item import will be getting triggered and then that will be running. And then do a lot of R&Ds on this. So, so much of R&Ds you can do. And then finally, what happens? You can now very well do this. <coughs> This completes item import now. First of all, we bring it to the UCM area, then we bring it to the interface area, then we bring it to the base area. And then query it in a proper manner, right? put the appropriate one. Right? Normally in our company, we, are, we, are, we are only freshers are very, whatever is good in doing it now. If you put the Buddha log, right? uh, the old people will not be, will not, if I am going to do this import, what happens, I will make a mistake. If I am given some 50,000 items, what happens, I won't do it properly. <laughs> only freshers will have a, what happens, a good mindset. <clears throat> They will not make any mistakes at all. <clears throat> so everybody is given a batch number. I am not going to give 2001 to 2010. So 10 worksheets I have to do. So next one is what? 2011 to 2020. Likewise, what happens? Every employee will be given 10, 10 batches. And then they will be given the description, the item name and description, etc, etc. Et and then they will now create the Excel sheet and then they will now perform the upload actually. And then when the manager wants to see, say 2006, they want to see, he will now query on the 2006 on the starting lot number. So he will put it and then make a search. So only those records will be coming for his edit actually. So there is an excellent practice fine, by which what happens, you won't make any mistakes at all. <laughs> you go to the monitor process, like that, so click on it. You can even have your own practice. Not that you have to only follow my field, my method. No, fine, like that. So it's not running, no, fine, click on running. So by the import is not getting completed, no, fine, click on it. <laughs> so now everything is not getting completed, no, fine, like that. So all I would import is completed. You go there and then see the main item import, no, fine, on. The main item import, no, succeeded actually. And now we go there and then query it. Fine, it will now be four, five, six, seven. Fine, click on four, five, six, seven, eight. Fine, click on such. Now the list price has been changed to five, six, seven, eight. <laughs> so on a spreadsheet, what happens? Uh, we have exported it and then brought it into the system actually. So we can even edit. If you want to edit here itself, fine. Go there. If you go to actions and then what happens? Edit mass stages and then here what happens? Edit item attributes. We do it in this itself. What happens? There will not be much of a space actually. This is a space constraint one. If you have five thousand records, you see it's very very difficult to navigate down. Now. So instead, what happens? You can very well bring it to the Excel sheet and then do it. Excel sheet is very easy for it to do now. Fine. So exp export into Excel sheet and then do it now. Fine. That is the best way. Fine. That. You go to actions and then here what happens? You go there. If you go to edit item attributes in the spreadsheet, what happens? It will be exporting into a spreadsheet and then there you can comfortably do the editing actually. If there are multiple attributes to be done now. <clears throat> so we have now seen what how to bring the item into the what happens, UCM area, then how to bring the item into the interface area, then how to bring it to the base area. Then afterwards, what happens? You know, seen the mass edit of so many things. Right? You query on the particular lot number. So in our company, what happens? We used to do like <clears throat> we use the starting lot number because many of the items were not a lot controlled actually. If it is a lot control, some other field you have to choose and then put a common number for this. If there are five thousand items, you are importing it, and all the items will be having a common batch number. Or batch number and start, start number, everything will be same actually, so that you won't get confused actually. And then query on it. And then query on it. And then you go there, select everything. Right. Click on it and then go to actions and then perform the manage item mass changes. This is the place where you do it. Now, right. click on it. First of all, we will now assign it to the organization. And then afterwards, if required, I can even edit the item attributes or otherwise I will now edit them on a spreadsheet. Actually. And then the remaining are all seldom used. And right. there are so many things that we never use them at all. These are the only things assigned to organization, edit item attributes, and then edit it on a spreadsheet. This is the one which you used while we are implementing it actually. So, but list price, I was known that is the master control item. If I give a five, the child org also must be having a five now. Right? Okay, say so here's the here's only five only. Five one six, five one six only. <laughs> Got it now, right? There it was one, two, three, four was doing it. When you're doing it via Excel sheet, what happens? Both the master and child are having the same value. Good, good, good. But when I'm attributing, when I'm doing it, what happens? When I'm doing via this now, I click on it, when I go to actions and go to this, and then when I do the item attribute channel, click on any item attribute channel, I will not say different different values I'll give now. Fine, click on it. So uh, I will not say I will not say eleven. Fine. No, five and five are coming. It's very correct now. Fine. Eleven. And then I give a twelve now. Fine. I will not give a thirteen. Fine. I will not give a fourteen now. We will not see how it works in this place. What happens? Go there. So click on next and then do it now. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fine. Click on next now. And then click on submit. <laughs> this time we'll not see. Previously, what happens? One, two, three, four was coming. One, two, three, four is not correct at all. So click on again. Now we'll now see how it's coming. 11, 12, 13, 14. Fine, click on it. We'll not have a look at now. Whereas you are doing in a spreadsheet, it is now honoring the master control variables. 
Spread sheet is controlling the master report. Thank you, sir. I will not go and have a look at no fact on it. No, have a look at the spread sheet. No fact on it. So here, what I will, if you give a refresh, no fact, there is a refresh in there. Ah, uh, uh, I will not. What I will close it and then again open this mass mass change no fact on it. I will not say don't close. <clears throat> is it seven eight? I will not try to see the Excel sheet. No fact on it. No, you want to try to open the Excel sheet. No, see this is the one. No fact. Double click on it and then see the Excel sheet. Five six seven eight was there, but while uploading it, the five six and five six only came. Right. It is honoring the master control attribute. Now, when you're doing it, the item attribute change will not see what happens. Now right. go there. Go there. Refresh it. Right. Go refresh it. So once when this item import completes, we will not see how it's running. It's not fast. Item import shell is running now. So 11, 12, 13, 14, you are given now. Right. Give on it. There is all mistake. It's a bug. If you what was the report Oracle, they will not correct all the bugs actually. <laughs> So now, what about the item put shell succeeded? I don't put it no running. I it. No past. Find the second item put is no running now. Find it. And then in the browse items, what about the, the main one? Find uh, where are the browse items. My item is. If you go there and then here, what happens? You go there and then make a search. It will not show all the batches basically. If I click on search, it does show me all the batches. See, one batch has not failed actually. It will also fail actually. If you click on the X mark, now I click on the X mark, it will not show you the reason for the failure actually. Side import error, fine. So I will not click on the view output and then see there. Click on the view output. You will have the error. So nothing is shown. Okay. View log. Click on the view log. So click on it and then see. Okay. And there is an error. Okay. So the error log is the fact. Click on it. Go there. The risk price is master organization controlled. Cannot be updated to the child org. Very correctly coming now. This is maybe last time we ran in okay. the last thing. So master control attributes cannot be changed in the child log. Okay. Now giving a very clear error. Error message is very clear, actually. We cannot do it. So that is what happened now in this place. So it corrected only two records now. Fine. The remaining two records was not updated, actually. So, no, no. so here, what happens? You go there. And then if you click on search, now fine. This also has to end in error now, fine. But it has ended properly. So once when you do via item attribute change, it updates everything. But on a spreadsheet, it honors the attribute. Actually. On the spreadsheet, the master control attribute is not allowed to be what happens to change the child dog. You go to the browser item fine. So when you do the item attribute updates, fine click on it. Straight away, fine click on it. It's allowing you to update directly. Now you see 11, 12, 13, 14. So these are all child offs. Fine child offs. You master control. Uh, when you're doing it by Excel sheet, it's best no. Excel sheet is honoring the MCS, master control attribute and or control attributes. Fine. Whereas when you do the item, if you go via this now, fine. The item, so it is allowing you to change anything at your at your will, actually. It is not honoring the what happens the, the, the dependency basically. OC, MCA dependency is not on. Here, this is honoring it actually. So this completes what happens, the item import now. I want all of you to complete this item import uh, before Monday 3 p.m. now. Can you do that? You try on your instance now, fine? This is my fear. Yes, sir. Please. Try it to me on the WhatsApp group now, fine? I'll be very happy to see that. Okay. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Bye for now. Good day, sir. Bye. Have a good, uh, good weekend, sir. Good weekend, okay. So we'll all meet on Monday at 3 p.m., okay? Thank you. Bye. Okay, sir. Sure.